You'll be surprised that Excel can handle critical chain project management or CCPM. In this video, we'll create and share a dynamic template in Excel with three easy steps. Replacing schedule padding with a project buffer, tracking buffer consumption and project progress by fever charts, and creating feeding and resource buffers to manage uncertainty. You can follow along by getting the Excel workbook via the provided link in the description below. Step 1 is replacing schedule padding with a single project buffer. Our case study focuses on a project with duration estimates for its eight activities. Due to existing uncertainty, a safety margin or extra time is considered for critical activities. For example, activity A's duration has been padded with a buffer of two days. Using critical path method or CPM, we can find activity finish dates and also project completion on day 48. We can use these dates to draw a Gantt chart to visualize the timeline. Considering this base case, our aim is to gain more efficiency using critical chain project management or CCPM. Eliyahu Goldratt developed that based on the theory of constraints or TOC. To manage project bottlenecks, arbitrary schedule paddings are integrated into a single project buffer to prevent activities from taking longer than necessary, which is known as Parkinson's law. In our project, the second Gantt chart animates this concept and replaces schedule paddings with a single project buffer of 12 days. Project buffer also addresses student syndrome or starting activities at the last possible moment. If you want to implement CPM in Excel or draw Gantt charts, the video links are provided in the description. Step 2 is tracking buffer consumption and project progress by fever charts. Creating a fever chart in Excel is a proactive tool for risk management to monitor buffer consumption relative to project completion in CCPM. This helps project managers see if a project is on track or not. We should define tracking milestones and in our project days 0, 10, 20, 27, 36 and 48 are chosen. Milestones in real projects should represent stages where significant progress or evaluation occurs. For each milestone, calculate the project completion percentage. For example, on the 10th day, the completion percentage is 10 divided by the total duration of 48, which is 21%. The formula is then replicated for other milestones. We should monitor project activities at each milestone and record buffer consumption based on the site data. For example, at a 10-day milestone, one day of buffers out of 12 days has been consumed, which is 8%. We can find buffer consumption for other milestones using the site reports. For plotting the fever chart, select completion percentage and buffer consumption columns. Then insert scatter plot with the straight lines and markers. Feel free to adjust the style to suit your project reports. Desirable region on this chart is close to horizontal axis where maximum completion is achieved with minimum buffer consumption. Undesirable region is close to the vertical axis where minimum progress is made with maximum buffer consumption. Let's create a fever chart and color code both regions. Right click on the graph and select format chart area. Choose gradient field, select linear type and choose the desirable direction. Make sure there are two gradient stops and choose contrastive colors like green and orange. If the trend line enters the orange zone, it's a signal that corrective actions may be needed to get the project back on track. The green zone indicates sufficient progress relative to buffer usage. Step 3 is creating feeding and resource buffers to manage uncertainty. Feeding buffers protect a critical chain by adding extra time to non-critical paths that connect to it. In our project, two non-critical activities C and E connect to activity F in the critical chain. Activity C has a duration of 4 days and activity E has a duration of 8 days. The total duration of these activities is 12 days. In CCPM, a feeding buffer is typically set at around 50% of the non-critical path duration. This safeguards for any delays in non-critical activities and consequent impact on the critical chain. Resource buffers ensure that resources required for activities on the critical chain are available. Resource R1 is used by both activities A and E, which could delay the start of subsequent activities if unavailable. Therefore, we can consider a resource buffer of one day before each critical chain activity that depends on the R1 resource. A resource buffer serves as a prompt to ensure resources are available and prevent bottlenecks without extending the project timeline. While the critical path identifies the longest sequence of dependent tasks, critical chain project management for CCPM considers resource availability and reduces inefficiencies caused by multitasking and other delays. And there you have it, an easy and short implementation of CCPM using only three simple steps in Microsoft Excel. If you found this video useful, please remember to like and consider subscribing. I look forward to reading your comments and seeing you in the next one.